In this short clip here, we'll take a look at the ProArt software. This is the software that's used to administer this particular laptop. This is the ASUS ProArt Creator uh, Studio 16, Studio Book 16. And this is more a creative and content creators oriented device. Thus, it's a little bit limited and actually quite different. I'm surprised than the ASUS Armory Create software that's you know, look out loaded across most of their gaming uh, lineup of laptops. So that said, we'll start here at the dashboard. Uh, what you can see here is basically very basic information. This is quite limited. I don't know if ASUS assumes that because we are content creators or editors or creative people that we don't have the technical know-how or we don't want advanced control over our notebook. But alas, they've only given us most like mostly read-only information in this software. So the only thing you can really change here is there are three different modes. There's a standard mode, performance mode, and full speed mode down from the five or so modes available on the ASUS Armory Crate software on their gaming laptop software. Right. That said, standard mode basically limits to a cool and quiet operation. And for the most part, uh, if you're working in a quiet environment or if you're in this mode, it'll be a silent laptop. You won't really hear any noise. You may hear a little bit of noise as you start to do some intensive tasks, but for the most part, it's silent. Performance mode then starts to kick up the fans. And you'll see here down here that the GPU and the CPU fans start to kick up slightly and ramp all the way up to around, I believe, 5,000, just shy of 5,000 or sorry, 4,000 RPM. And then full speed mode cranks the fans all the way up to nearly 6,000 RPM, even a little bit higher. And that means you're going to get a lot more fan noise out of this particular laptop. If you're gaming, you should either be using the performance mode or full speed mode. Same applies if you're rendering or if you're doing some video editing, you want to get the maximum performance out of this 4070. Make sure you put it in performance mode. I felt that full speed mode only added more noise without really offering additional uh, additional you know, additional solid and significant gains in performance thus far, the full speed mode is really only there to get the last few FPS if you're doing competitive gaming. If you're doing any kind of specific workload, for the most part, leaving it in performance mode and forgetting it will lead you to a quiet and cool operation, but get you that performance that you want for the full 130 watts out of this 4070 when it's required. Uh, that said, we've also got some detailed information here about the CPU, just uh, the frequency here, the usage. We've got 5600 megahertz of uh, two sticks, dual channel, uh, 32 gigabytes of RAM here. So that's nice to see. Nice and cool on the CPU temp, 59 degrees. And we've got some information here about the memory and storage itself. If you pan over to the left hand or to the right side rather, We've got just an additional panel here for color calibration. Because this is a creator-oriented device, it comes from the factory pre-calibrated. You can go into the calibration here and look at some of the details around that. And that's really all there is to see here in this particular software. So very, very basic, you know, mostly oriented towards switching the different modes. But if you set it to performance mode, you can basically set it and forget it. And you won't have any issues for the most part. Now let's go into color control. So this is where this actually laptop really shines. It's a 100% DCI-P3 panel, thus it has this factory calibration of 0 0.73. If you click on it, you can see the details here uh, to see the report information for where the uh, coverage of all of these things are. You know, some sp specific points about the DCI-P3 coverage. For example, the Delta E is 0.727, very, very small, excellent. Below one is very good. That means these colors are almost on point in terms of where they should be in a reference uh, standpoint. In addition, you can also start a recalibration, which will take you through a bunch of different steps to recalibrate this device. But since it's already been recalibrated in the factory, I don't see a need to do that unless you have a specific creator workflow and you need to optimize uh, colors or switch over from the DCI-P3 mode to an sRGB mode for your uh, laptop. Uh, so the other thing here is we've got a smart. Yes, we don't want to do that. We have a work smart here. This is a tool to help kind of macro some of your applications. So if you're an editor and you often use, let's say, Acrobat, um, you know, my, uh, Photoshop, and you use perhaps some editing tool to you know do your daily work, you can set them up here as quick launch tasks, and they will essentially launch at the same time using that group. And you can basically just go here, select the different applications that you want, and you will get those all launched together as a group by simply hitting that one button. A nice feature to have. I don't know how much value it adds. Perhaps somebody can really leverage that a lot. Then we have here the Asus dial pad. So this is the dial that's built into the laptop itself. You can go in here and start to configure them. So as you see here, if I press the, if I rotate the dial rather, I start to see by default, only brightness and volume are configured on here. And if I press down on the dial pad, I can then adjust, you know, in a very circular fashion. And it's actually very responsive. 
uh, the, the software. And if you hold down the dial settings and press the button, it will basically bring you to this uh, section as well where you can configure your dial pad. You can also configure other customized keys here to launch different applications. And if you go back to the dial pad here, it's a little bit slow to respond sometimes, but you know, keep in mind once it's actually you're, once you're using it, pressing it is immediate. So just a configuration here that takes a moment to load and I'm not quite sure why. All right, so that's it. We then have performance optimization. If you go in here, really the only thing you're allowed to do is to remove background apps that are running or hogging memory. Again, a nice tool, but I don't know how useful it is considering that you can just close an application in the background anyway. If you use tons and tons of applications, and you want those things to be closed or you just have a habit of leaving them all open, perhaps this would be of benefit to you. Same with app order or app power priority. So this allows you to designate a particular app to use more of the GPU and CPU power by adding a new application here. So for example, if we select, let's find Microsoft Edge. We will find it here, Microsoft Edge. We can then go to confirm and then this means that this app will now have priority in terms of um, which resources whether it be gpu for rendering in the browser or cpu access this app will get prioritized over other applications it seems to run okay sometimes it's a little bit wonky but you know that's i think because of uh, the interaction between the asus and the microsoft software but really that's all there is really here to show in this uh, particular profile creator hub you have a notification here which will tell you tell you about available updates you can also go to settings and there's video tutorials here which is a nice thing to have but uh, i don't think it's entirely all that helpful if you go here to general tab you'll just see some information about where your service location is in other words where it'll pull uh, information about your device from and you have a nice little handy link here to open up an email to contact Asus. Plus, you've got an update tab. Of course, you can click here, check, and look at all the updates that are available for your device, including BIOS updates are delivered through the ProWart Creator Hub. Announcements is just some simple updates that are pushed from Asus. Usually, this is pretty empty. So if you refresh now, there's nothing. This is really the only thing I've seen in, in, uh, in my use with this particular device. And then you've got a check version detail, which gives you some very interesting detailed information about versions if you're trying to troubleshoot or having issues with a particular software aspect of this particular laptop. So that said, uh, that's really all there is to see here. And this is just a, a feedback form where you can provide some feedback and comments back to Asus. And it's just, you know, an in-software way to do that without having to go to a website, find a link and, and do that. And finally, the last thing I'd like to show off here is the color management up here. This is a pretty cool tool that allows you to pick specific colors. One of the neat things that's included in here is that you can go into a mini palette, select a few colors for your projects, and there's a built-in handy dandy screen picker tool which allows you to hover over any part of your screen and collect uh, new color information. So that will be added to your default color palette. And those can be used for creative purposes when you're drawing on the screen, coloring, or in whatever applications you wanna use for color matching per se. If you open this color palette, you can then click on each color here and see some detailed information about the RBG and the hex values and stuff that you can use to recreate that color in your creative software. So that's basically all there is to say about the ProArt Creator Hub. I hope you enjoyed this quick short video and an overview of the control software that comes with the ProArt StudioBook 16 from Asus. And this one is powered by the RTX 4070 and a pen is included. Stay tuned to my channel for the full review coming on this laptop very, very soon. And uh, thanks for watching. Please share and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.